for this video, Dr. Popular is my spirit animal. Don't make it weird. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but stick around to the end. I got a tutorial that I think you'll enjoy. Check it out. Okay, welcome back to the Definitive Yo-Yo. I'm Simply Mike and today we will take our skills to the next level. Today we consider 10 tricks you should know at the intermediate level. These 10 tricks represent a significant upgrade from the beginner's level. Building on the foundation that you laid as a beginner, you seek to add elements to this repertoire so that you become a more well-rounded yo-yo player. And I only mention that in case you've plateaued and want to break through the glass ceiling. At this stage of the game, being able to bind is a given. And a consistent throw is a given. And if you're having trouble with either one of those, I suggest you practice and come back. We'll be here for you. But if you can do those and you are at this level, then Yo-Yo really opens up for you. You can work on finishing up the basics. You can work on whips and slacks. You can work on tech. You can work on horizontal, truly. At this stage, the world is your oyster. <laughs> but let's have a look at our first trick, the Eiffel Triangle. You'll notice that this trick builds off of a double or nothing, which is the theme for a lot of the tricks that's going to be featured today. But double or nothing is just the beginning. Let's have a closer look at it. That's going to be it for the close-up. Now, let's have one more look at it. Not too difficult once you learn some of the basics. But that's what intermediate level is all about. Build it on what you've already established as a player. Our number two trick is Eli Hops. Now, this can be super tricky in the beginning. But once you start getting it and getting it consistently, this can be incredibly fun to play to do to perform yeah to perform <laughs> at the last yo-yo contest i was able to attend i saw a guy doing eli hops to the sky i mean he had his whole string all the way taut that was kind of incredible so uh that's the point that i wanted to get to for me if i don't do at least four in a row i haven't done a trick Our number three trick is skin the gerbil. This is a Dr. Popular staple for the intermediate level player. Let's have a look. A little sloppy, I know. But I got the basics down. I had to add a step because I was doing it wrong for a year or so. I found that the hardest thing about this trick was actually missing when I was supposed to and catching it when I was supposed to. But otherwise, not bad. Next up, the Plastic Cool Whip, a variation on Plastic Whip that uh, my son and I developed. Dr. Popular calls it adding flourishes. But it can be called style, flair, or a little bit of the razzle-dazzle. But whatever you want to call it, we just don't want to call it normal looking. Who wants that? I certainly don't. I have done a tutorial already, but essentially, before you end the regular plastic whip, just throw a couple of rotations in to make it cool. And you should be well on your way to being a master. <laughs> We're halfway there. The next trick is the one and a half mount. And this is what it looks like. 
I consider the one and a half a little more difficult than a double or nothing because it asks a little bit more of you. The double or nothing, you can just stick your two fingers out and that's it. But the one and a half requires a little bit more. And I'll break that down for you in the next next scene. My goal was to be able to do it in one fluid motion. Then I consider myself having mastered it. My next goal regarding the one and a half is being able to do it from a whip. But for right now, we'll just settle with the fluid motion. If you can do it in one fluid motion, then welcome to it, brother. But if not, try a little practice. It never hurts. <laughs> Our number six trick is the gondola. Yet another trick building off that double or nothing. This time we do put it over our thumbs and there's a slack element in there. We catch, we slide to the right, slide to the left, bind and return, just like that. Depending on how you do this trick, this can't be super flashy to the non-thrower. They don't know how you're doing it, but you do. <laughs> I am lightweight exaggerating my movement so people can catch but if you know how to do this trick it should be super smooth and super flashy so that the nine throwers out there will be like oh my god how did he do that Our number seven trick is gentrified. This is the trick that put me in a different mindset for learning tricks. It looks way more difficult than it is and once you get it together, man, this is really fun to do. Again, it's based off a of double or nothing over the thumbs. And then you manipulate the string so that you can do these ins and out maneuvers. End up in a trapeze, whammo and blam. <laughs> Granted, it does take some getting used to, but once you get it, especially that last part, this thing can be incredibly satisfying to do. Our number eight trick is magic trick. This trick is heavily associated with Ann Connolly, and she's very good at doing it. So good, in fact, that I was a little intimidated by seeing it. I had this sitting in the playlist for over two years before I decided to tackle it for this video. I'm still not perfect, but I'm a lot better than I thought I would be. It's not as difficult as I thought it was going to be. But, okay, so rah, so rah. After a little practice, this trick got way easier than it was when I started. There was actually one element that I needed to work on to make this thing flow real nice. Let me know if you want to see a tutorial and I'll share that information with you in a future video. Comment below if you want one. Super confident look not included. <laughs> and now we're almost to the end. The next trick is Queegee Bow. Queegee Bow is almost next level. It is one of the most difficult tricks that I've learned so far, but it is also one of the most satisfying and my favorite. If I was left with just one trick to do for the rest of my yo yo and career, I think this would be it. And people love to see it too. Oh wow, you people do yo yo like that? And I'm like, oh yeah. Oh wow, you're pretty good at that. Yeah. I know. <laughs> In its simplest form, Queegee Bow is just a series of hops and interceptions of the string. But it's done in such a way you get flash, flare, and fanfare with every time you do it. To me, this single trick represents the modern aesthetic very well for Yo Yo. This begins and ends the conversation. Dope. And we finally come to it. The number 10 trick is Brent. Not as flashy as the Queegee Bow. This trick is more of a transitional trick, helping us acquire skills 
that we'll need for one of the tricks that I'm going to feature in the next video for professional level. In the meantime, this is definitely a trick you want to learn and get down into your repertoire. Pretty flashy and a nice repeater. Discovering that I was having some difficulties for this particular segment. Troubles usually boil down to one thing, bad string tension, which I neglected to check before I started attempting it. But yeah, that's pretty bad. So after making the necessary adjustments, that made doing this trick infinitely more doable. Check it out. So yeah, this looks simple, and it is, but it does teach a necessary skill that we will need. We'll explore what that need is in a future video. And only now at the end do you realize you need another tutorial. This one is the Magic Trapeze. I found this out from Dr. Popular, and here's what it looks like. Let's have another look at it. Him putting it into a combo. Bam. That is infinitely stylish. And I can't do it that well, so I have a workaround because I think my string is a little too long. What I do is I get into a mini trapeze and then, you know, swing to the inside and there it is. Let's see that again. And if you're familiar with rolling to the inside, that's essentially what we're doing, but the opposite direction. We'll do a complete breakdown in one second. You'll notice that I'm catching the yo-yo on the string and then swinging it over. Make sure you do it to the inside of your body so that you don't mess yourself up so it'll be a true trapeze. We'll have one more look at it, even slower. I'm still working on smoothing this out and making it less flamboyant and me looking less awkward. But as the years go by, I'm pretty sure that I'll get a little better at this. I am but a learner. So, you get into your trapeze, and once there, hit your combo like normal, and you should be good to go. Yo, yo, it is not as hard as it looks sometimes. I found that out doing this trick and a couple others in this series. And I'm glad I did, because now I can attack some more. Hope you guys got something out of this, but check out what we get into for next time. So, speaking of Dr. Popular, the yo-yo used in that last segment was a yo-yo that he sent over. We'll have a look. Also, we'll do a day in the life. Check this out. Oh, yeah. Duncan, what we got here? Whoa. Pretty good at that, man. Nah. What is that called? A sunset wheel? What that? Butterfly. Yeah. But butterfly. Butterfly. butterfly or, okay. It's either butterfly or angel wings. And with that, we'll draw to a close. I hope you guys got something out of this piece. I certainly did. I learned that yo-yo tricks are not as hard as they look. It just takes a little practice. Okay, this has been 10 yo-yo tricks at the intermediate level. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.